Hey, everybody. You're about ready to listen to my interview with Jeremy Redman, the founder and CEO of Task Magic. You can kind of think of Task Magic as a combination of Bubble, Airtable, Zapier, and Loom. Super interesting conversation. Enjoy. This is the e commerce Edge podcast with your host, Jason Greenwood. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of At the Coalface. I've got a cracking guest for you today. His name is Jeremy Redman, and he is the founder and CEO of no code slash low code platform Task Magic. Welcome to the podcast, Jeremy. Whoa. Whoa, thank you Intense, for that. intense. Intense, coming with it. And I like when people come with it. So great work, great work, Jason. So happy to be here. Look, it is super cool to, to have you here. Maybe we, maybe, I don't know, maybe we've got that, maybe we've got that simpatico California vibe going on because you're in Burbank, aren't you? I'm in Burbank, yeah. Burbank, Hollywood, what they call the airport now. It used to be Bob Hope, now it's Burbank, Hollywood Airport. It's, it's funny Burbank, you mentioned that. It's funny you mentioned that because actually when I was about – I think I was about 20, not long before I left for New Zealand, I went to a filming of The Price is Right with a good friend of mine, but my best friend in, in, in the States, Kevin. He, he's originally from Pennsylvania. He had moved out to California to make, him, make a name for himself in the music industry. His parents were visiting from the East Coast. And we went there with his parents, and his father ended up winning, I don't know, one of the showcase showdowns or something like that. He ended wow. up winning a whole bunch of stuff from The Price. He ended up getting selected from the audience. He was – I don't know if you've ever been to the filming of The Price is Right, no, but it's quite interesting. The way that they, the way that they pick people is they, you, they parade you past when you're queuing up to go actually into the show, and they're que- you're queuing up for them to give you name tags and all the rest. They parade you past a panel of about five people where you just basically just tell your name. You tell a little bit of, like you get like 30 seconds to tell your life story. And basically oh, really? they pick the people with the most, the most flamboyant personalities or the most interesting stories <laughs> to tell. And his dad had this finish drawl, Easternish drawl. And he's a funny character, a super funny character. And his father was picked to be on The Price is Right, won the showcase showdown. Didn't end up making it all the way to the end and winning the, the million dollar or whatever it is prize, but he ended up winning a whole bunch of stuff. And and yeah, that, that's my story well, about yeah. Burbank, California. You talk, one, didn't know a lot of those details, and you talk about being simpatico. My grandmother was on The Price is Right once back in like the 80s, like the 80s, I think. I want to say it was wow. the 80s, 70s maybe. I don't know. She had the videotape. Like, I think they give you the videotape after. Maybe it's not a tape anymore. Maybe it's just yes. a link to whatever it is. Yes. But yeah, that <laughs> meant to be, Jason. Yeah. Meant to be. I hear you. Yes. It's super interesting stories. I love the overlap there. And we also have an overlap in another way, which is both into tech. You've now built, I've looked at your profile. And according to you now, you are not a coder. You're not a developer. So that's another thing we have in common. I'm not a developer either, but you've mm-hmm. also had the privilege to build three, not one, not two, but three six-figure no-code startups from scratch. How cool is that? I I think it's so much more empowering that it it is cool, but it's so much more empowering as I hear you say that. So like (laughs) when I hear you say that back to me, it sounds like trivia when I say it to myself or I try to remind myself what I've done. When you say it, it sounds very empowering. And I think I, I look back at the first one because I have one seven figure, which is the task magic, what we're doing right now. And then three other six figure companies built from nothing, from nothing with no, I have, I've never had a technical co-founder. So like I've always, my, the very first company that I started, that was called Air 5. And it was just like a digital business card exchange. And it was made out of WordPress and like a few dozen plugins. So Teaching yourself the OG no code tools, like tools you don't have to customize or use for, and just offshoring that kind of stuff if you need to like, or like just getting the labor off of your side and onto these plugins and their team and their support teams. So as long as you can write support at whatever.com for these plugins, you can create things. And it just, I go back to, man, that first company like I was able to make a couple hundred grand on, 
Then I was able to afford a full-time engineer to put on staff to build the second one. And you're just like, there's this one thing, this through line between all the companies that I've created. And it's like, it's connecting people like myself and like you who don't know how to code and showing them that same empowerment and going, you can do this too. You can have a $200,000 a year business. You can, it's hard work, right? But it's like the tools are there to have everyone level up. And I'm just one of those tools. And you've built this tool. You've built the, your latest tool slash platform yep. slash amazing no code platform is task magic. And from what I can tell, it's a BPA or business, not to use any flashy acronyms, but but business process automation platform, at least from what I can tell, but it's a no code automation platform. And Correct. you call it the IO, you, you call it Task Magic iOS is your individual operating system that automates workflows in your business, presumably. And yeah. I'm guessing that it is a business process automation platform that has a little bit of integration thrown in for good measure. So something maybe like a, a mixture of a Zapier and a no code slash low code business automation platform. Yes. So I, that's amazing. I, you, should, you should just write all our copy. So <laughs> every time like I think about this, like I started off with those tools like early on with using Zapier. And the more I use Zapier, the better I got with it. And there are limited tools to what those companies have like API or what they grant API access to. And a lot of tools don't have Zapier connections and I know they're working on it and that's cool. And what I learned by going deep into these, this realm of non-technical folks, especially small business owners like FMBs, like one, two, three people like e-com shops or like a bagel shop or a pizza shop, like they have seven employees. They don't have the luxury of, or money to do or learn these things. So like connecting API, they don't know what an API is, Jason. They don't know, they don't give a shit, right? All they want to do is know that automations exist and they can help their business. They just don't know what exactly to automate. So they don't want to go into Zapier and go, oh, cool. They know, cool. I can go in this thing and I have to go into Google Sheets on the web and I have to go and do toast to, to reconcile the orders from toast with my online inventory. And Zapier doesn't have this direct connection and I don't want to go learn a tool. Oh yeah, by the way, I sat down for Zapier and now I got to go call this guy for to order bagel dough. I don't know, sourdough. Like there's a more important things, but they know the value of automation, like software automation. So I was like, okay. So it started with like me just talking to like small businesses. And like you said, the IOS, like the I stands for individual, right? Like the operating system and the individual part of it is like these individual businesses, these one, two, three people, small businesses. One person has an e-com shop on Shopify, right? But there's other things and other processes that they can automate and they're already used to doing these. So I go, cool, I can show you how to do this. And just tell me what you need automated. And what people would do is send me like a loom video or a zip message or something recorded on their screen. They're like, hey, I have to do this. And then I go here and then I go here. And then I was like, okay, wouldn't it be cool if that thing that they were recording on their screen, which is them doing the automation, wouldn't that be cool if that just did the automation? So we built this recorder, this automation recorder that captures your actions as they're actually going through it. So they will hit a button to record. They will do that manual repetitive process once while it's recording in the web, hit stop, and then they can schedule it and connect it to whatever else. So it's, there's zero learning curve. There's nothing they have to do. And then the system will learn as it goes and recommend other automation for you. Wow. So this, the cool thing about this is that not only do you not have to be a coder, but it feels like you have really almost thrown the kitchen sink at this thing whilst keeping it easy to use. So based on what you said and based on the scenarios and the sort of use cases, the example use cases you listed on your site, I feel like you could almost be considered for people out there that have heard of Bubble, the no-code, low-code development platform, mm -hmm. and for people out there that perhaps have heard of Airtable. And for people out there who have heard of Zapier, if we put those three things in a cauldron and stirred the cauldron and mixed them all together, what what might drop out of that is something like Task Magic, because 
it feels like you've obviously got your own database. You, you're a SaaS platform like these other platforms, and you allow people to automate tasks that would otherwise be manual. You allow them to do that by connecting disparate systems together, even if they don't know how to code, even if they don't know what an API is or means. Uh, and you allow them to store data and manipulate that data along the way. So it feels very much like you are, you've taken these disparate systems, these disparate concepts of no code, low code, software development, database management, API management, integration. You've stirred them all together. And what dropped out was a marriage really of these systems to create something called task magic. Yes, exactly what it is. It's all magic. So it's like you're <laughs> dropping all these things in a cauldron and you're just whipping up these spells. And then boom, all of these spells come out. And now you're some wizard. I mean, you don't even know what you're doing, Jason. So it's like you have all these apps. You use all these things. You throw them in. Now I think I should just brand. I should go right in with all the magic part of this. You should just you stir that pot, and you're connecting all of them. And you already have all these tabs open, right? So you're just literally doing the thing once. Like I said, you have to have all these other. Like you're using Airtable. You're using Google Sheets. You're using Bubble. You're using all these things. Now this just like glues them all together and you do that thing once. Like we have a customer, a non-technical customer that runs a hosting company. And all he had to do for spinning up a server was use us and then integrated it with DigitalOcean, so, which is a server company. And like normally they make it kind of one click, but they don't have, but a, a non-engineered person doesn't know how to spin up a server using their API and code that so they can just go in and click buttons and go cool every time someone buys from Stripe, set up this trigger run this recording boom and then send them the their server that they have that connected their wordpress website or whatever so it's so much and we're still like in that stage where we're growing pretty insane like it's some 60 percent month over month in the last seven eight months so we're getting that, we're kind of finding that true product market fit, exciting stage to be at. But yes, it's exactly how you say it. Love that. And you, some of these examples that you've given that might be really relevant to my audience in particular are things that, for example, a e-commerce store owner or a webmaster or someone who's in charge of e-commerce, maybe they're an e-commerce manager or they're a marketing manager, and they're doing a lot of repetitious tasks, sedative mm-hmm. tasks. I don't even know if repetitious is a word. I know Repet- repetitive should is, be. But, should be. but uh, repetitive, they're doing repetitive tasks and they're doing something like, for example, automating a fail. Let's say there's a failed charge, right? And they yep. want to set up an ab- abandoned cart workflow. Now, of course, they could do that in something like Clavio, but maybe you want to do something custom off the back side of that, right? And ask yep. someone to to update their card details or something like that. You'd be able to do that with Task Magic. Or if you wanted to do a custom abandoned cart follow up outside of that, and you want to trigger off something custom in Clavio, or if you wanted to if you wanted to set up automatic reordering of products with a supplier based on a certain based on a certain inventory level inside your Shopify or big commerce store for example there's all sorts of things or you wanted to automatically generate invoices and send those out if there was a task and i'm thinking specifically here uh, i'll give you an example and you can tell me whether task magic would be able to do this for me so squarespace which is what i use for hosting my website for my consulting services squarespace oddly enough even though they've got an e-commerce module and even though it can automate the process of managing subscriptions i.e your customers can buy a subscription through the front end what they don't get is when they order something they do not they get an order confirmation email but they do not get an invoice. Now I can generate manually as a as an administrator, I can manually generate an invoice out of the back end as a PDF and then I can email that to the customer as an attachment, but the customer themselves can't do it for some reason. So only I as the administrator could do that. So using Task Magic when a new order comes into Squarespace, I could effectively set Task Magic up to go into the back end, download the PDF and email that to the end customer for their records i could automate that entire process using task magic correct you would take a snap you would make a recording what do you call it of you generating that invoice say you know how you can generate an invoice right in stripe and then mail it to that person you could do that so like 
you would make the trigger a new order. Then once a new order hit on your Google sheet or your whatever it would be in your database, Airtable, whatever, you would go um, amazing or Stripe, whatever. Stripe would hit Google sheet and then come in. It would play that record. It would bring in the variable from that person that just ordered and then create that thing you just did, that recording you just made, as in making the manual invoice that you don't have to do anymore. You're putting the variable in there for the email and then sending it to them. So it's literally, there wow. are no boundaries to what you can, if you can do it in the web, if you can manually do it in the web, this can automate it. That's just what I said. There's zero limit or limits that I know, not limits that I know of. So, and we're testing it with more things like this now, but anything you can run in the web, any process, like you just very eloquently made a solution I barely knew existed. So like the answer is cool. Here's what I have to do in Stripe. I have to generate this invoice every time someone comes in, gets sent, because I don't know how to do that, or I don't know how to automate it or whatever. You have to do it and it's manual and it's repetitive. You can then automate it using this just by doing this thing, that manual thing one time and then just hitting on every time this wants to trigger. Yes, 100%. And I would normally use Gmail because I use Gmail, I use G Suite. I would use Gmail to send that email with the correct attachment. And because you have you integrate with Gmail, you'd be able yep. to authenticate. If I wasn't already authenticated at the time yep. that ran, that endpoint ran, you would authenticate into my G Gmail account using my credentials so that you could use my Gmail account to send the email with the appropriate attachment at the appropriate time. Correct. All, and because as you're going through it, as you're going through this thing, you're securely entering, like you're securely logging into this thing like you would on the web, right? So, if, and then you can see that like it's encrypted. So you can't see the password just like anything else, just like anything else. And you're, it's simply running through that same thing that you're doing. Like you said, it's like using that, that like robotic process automation. Like it is that one thing and you just, it's doing it in an easy way that no one's really done it up to this point. Now, how did you come up with this amazing idea? Because like you say, RPA, BPA, robotic process automation, business process automation, these concepts or these terms or these ideas have been around for a very long time, but the promise yeah. of them, the, has the been promise nothing. of them, the promise of them has gone a little bit unfulfilled from my perspective, mainly because the main RPA platforms are so complex and so difficult yep. to use that you have to be an engineer to be able to set them up and run them and maintain right. them and look after them. But it sounds right. like you're trying to effectively democratize that robotic process automation so that almost anyone who knows how to use the internet and log in and do things online, almost anyone can use your platform. Yes, this is the first real and i've talked to so many founders and SaaS founders and investors no one has really built anything meaningful with rpa for passing process automation we backed into this like with my cto um we were designing like a form that would do it so they could type step by step similar to zapier and then he showed me something that he had built for what was essentially qa automation if you're not first if you're not familiar with that and maybe some of the listeners are and are, but QA automation is a way that engineers test things on the front end without having to do it manually. And when he showed me this tool that he had built, and I was like, is there any way we could just allow our customers to do this? Can we repurpose this thing you built in order to just do this? Because this seems really easy. This is the easiest thing. They're already making videos. We have to remake these things. And he goes, let me see. Skip two months and months later of tailoring this tool. We just like founding this solution. Oh, some people use these for very engineery things, but none have been where an engineer can go make their own custom code and do run their own things, but nothing really consumer facing if you're non-technical. So we just, it took a non-technical mind and, a, and an engineering brain like my CTO and to actually address the issue and give it to more people that were just like me and people who we were building for. So we really, it was just a mistake that we even found this. And now we're just going full steam ahead. 
So I think this is the coolest like application that you could possibly use in, with RP. I'm going to give you another example, and I'm going to ask you if Task Magic could do this thing. So I, I don't know if you've have you heard of the Make platform, similar to Zapier, but probably yes. a little bit more uh, yeah. full feature. Make is a yeah. Make is an iPass platform. It's integration platform as a service. And yep. I had a Make coder, a Make partner who automates using Make. I had him create an automation between Squarespace and Zero. Even though Make has an out of the box quote unquote recipe that connects Squarespace Commerce to Zero, it didn't do all the things I wanted it to do. So I needed customizations done to that quote unquote recipe, so that when an order came in from Squarespace, it automatically created the sales order in Zero. If the customer didn't exist in zero, it would automatically create them in zero. And if they were if they were a customer outside of New Zealand, then they needed to do, do something a different way. If they were a New Zealand-based customer, then they would create the customer in a different way with different rules. And then it would automatically do that so that when the payment came back down into zero from Stripe and reconciled via the bank account, I could effectively have the orders automatically show up in zero to, to reconcile directly with the payments that came through Stripe. And so there was a there was some custom coding and some custom work required to to tweak that recipe to make that all happen the way that I wanted it to happen. Yep. And it sounds like as long as I can authenticate into Squarespace via the Squarespace front end and as long as I can authenticate in zero via yep. the zero front end and as long as I can record like a loom video like you described, everybody knows what loom is. As long as yep. I can record what I've done and I can do it manually, then and I can set up some rules in your system, then I yep. could have created that automation without a developer. Correct. All end to end. If you that's the great part about this is if you can log into your it's not changing the behavior of what you're doing. Make.com, which used to be what, Integromat, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. So Using Zapier or Integromat or what is now make.com, you have to, one, learn what they're doing and how they're doing it. Most, they have limitations because it's a, you, them essentially like plugging into the API. And maybe it doesn't do specifically exactly what you want it to do. You want it to do something different or just run, I don't know, what does that mean? I don't know when that's triggering or what happens if it errors out or, I don't know. It's like, there's a learning curve to it. And every time it errors, there's also a learning curve to fix that error. So what we're doing is saying, cool, do the thing you regularly do. Again, if you can do it on the web, just do that thing. Just do that thing. Oh, cool. Hit record, log into your Squarespace, cool. Go into your Squarespace. Where's the order? Download that thing or make sure that everything you're downloading in the CSV or whatever that you want to reconcile is boom in a, say, just a Google Sheet. Cool. Go to that Google Sheet, take that thing in that cell and then reconcile it and then go log into zero. Reconcile that thing with the zero, delete that, add the attachment here or whatever it is, and then hit done recording. And if you hit done, you can schedule it. You can schedule it to loop through certain amount of things. You can schedule or delay certain things in between each step. But everything that you do, and I'll send you a, I'll send you a video of how this works. And everything that you do in that recording immediately, and maybe a few seconds, you will see every step that you took. So it's like it pre-writes what you're inputting and trying to figure out in a Zapier. Or a, you will hit record, do the things, and then it will show you the 31 steps you just did, you clicked here, you deleted that, you edited this, this was your password or your OAuth or your whatever it was. This is where you reconciled this. And then you can go to that step and edit it when something changes, or you can simply just re-record the automation in 90 seconds versus finding out, oh, where do I debug this? Do you know how often I was using Zapier and it er something errored? or I was pushing the tool to its limits or something. And the Zapier team wouldn't help me because they don't support the apps. But then I would go to that app, right? Where it was like a form builder or something in WordPress. And then their team wouldn't get back with me because that quickly. They would take days, if not a week or more to fix this issue because their primary goal wasn't the Zapier integration. So you're like, okay. So now for the last week, I've been going back and forth with these people, with both, with two people trying to figure out this bug, when instead I could have just re-recorded it in 90 seconds and been done with it. 
So it fixes it on both ends. So yes, it does exactly that thing. It's so easy to use because it's not interruptive to your current behavior. You're not learning a new behavior. You're simply hitting a button before you do the thing and then hitting another button to stop. Simple as that. Simple as recording a Loom video, essentially. Simply as record, yeah. And I would say that, except I'm, some people don't know what Loom is. Maybe every one of your listeners does. But like Loom's newer, I think they're like Series A or Series B, Series B. And it's like making its rounds on how to do it. And it's very easy to use. But yes, it's as simple as creating, create an automation as simple as creating a Loom. Who wouldn't want to do this? Who wouldn't use this over every other solution that was out there? And the, dude, Jason, the greatest thing is, and now I feel like I'm just talking to you, not on a podcast. But like the greatest thing about this, that is what we want. The greatest thing about this is those companies won't do what we're doing because they've created over the last decade, a learned behavior. So they're not going to tell their current audience or their current users to now switch up this behavior that they just spent a decade creating. So we're creating this behavior for what would be the tail end of the users, not necessarily the people who are stuck on a Zapier or a May. I do believe those companies are limited because every single body on earth can do the thing they're got to do. It's not, I have to learn another tool. It's I just press record and then do this other tool. I don't have to learn and then troubleshoot and error out this other tool. So it's so frictionless and it's not interruptive at all to their current way they do things, if that makes sense. It makes complete sense. And uh, the other thing that I really like about this is the fact that it can automate even things that you wouldn't think you could or should automate or it just would never cross your mind to automate. So you give an example, and I love the examples you give on your website, which is taskmagic.com. Very simple, straightforward, very yep. straightforward name. Isn't that a um, cool domain? Seriously Task cool Magic. domain. I'm surprised you're able to yeah. – I, I don't know. That's That feels like a golden domain. I'm surprised you're able to – Thanks, you're able to man. Thanks. It. Me too. Very cool. But you give an example of keep track of time and schedules. So let's say somebody, mm-hmm. I don't know, let's say you've got an office manager or let's say you've got somebody that's managing a group of people or managing booking of time or managing, let's say somebody's, uh, let's say they're a project manager and they're managing things inside of Jira or they're handing out tasks, they're parsing out tasks and they're creating tickets and they're, or let's say they're managing a help desk system like a gorgeous or something like that. And they've got to do different functions every, every Monday they come in and they do these five things as part of the start of their day. It sounds Sounds to me like almost anyone doing anything that is repetitive and anything that would normally need to be scheduled. And as long as they are using a web interface to do that thing, it sounds like they would be able to automate those repetitive processes. Yes. It's, I hate to have a close end with that yes or no, this is possible or this is impossible. I, go, I run through the checks of what you're saying. And I'm like, okay, it's possible. It's like these people, it's just mimicking your, the human interaction that, or the human actions you're taking and then essentially spelling them out step by step. And then you going, cool, this is good. All right, no, this didn't. Okay, I'm just going to edit this because this thing changed or edit this. That will all be included that you went to zero or you went to Clavio and then you just click edit this step, simple as pie. And that it, isn't that, Jason, the magic, isn't this, ma- what a, how, we say the domain's cool and we say, but how, how befitting is the name of it? Magic. It's magic. It's truly magic. It's not anything you're doing differently. It is you're sprinkling fairy dust on like this manual task you don't want to do and watching it run for you. Go sitting back and going, oh man, I'm never going to have to do another thing. What more can I do? You start to get addicted to it once you see it. And then you use it again. And you're like, I wonder if I can do this. And then it errors out. And you're just like, ah, oh, screw it. I'm just going to re-record it. So then you just hit re-record and do it. There's no overcomplication in any of it. So that is a lot of what we're doing. And you're exactly right. feels like you're conjuring up a genie. So it could have almost been called Task Genie as well, in the sense that you've got this, you've got this, you, you've got this yeah. right-hand man or woman who, you know, it would yeah. be similar to, it would be similar to, I liken it to if I had a, let's say I had a, an EA, an executive assistant, right? And we share screens. We share screens. They are taking notes. I'm saying, okay, when you come in on Monday morning, I want you to do these five things, bullet point them down. I want you to log into this system. I want you to copy and paste from here, 
into this other platform, into this other screen, have another tab open, do this. Once you do that, once you input the details, then I want you to do a mail merge or I want you to do X, Y, Z. Here's bullet, bullet point it down. We're going to record our screen share. So I'm going to record on Loom what I'm sharing with my EA that I want done. On a Monday, do this. On a Tuesday, do this. On a Wednesday, yeah. do this. And I'm going to I'm gonna do a Loom recording, which is just a screen recording software. As you say, not everybody's necessarily yeah. heard of Loom. But I'm going to tell my EA, you can think of Task Magic almost like an executive assistant that is taking notes while you do yeah. something on screen and is bullet pointing the things that you want them to do on a re recurring basis. And then they're going to go away and they're going to manually, as a human being, go and log into those five systems. They're going to do the copy and paste out of one system into another system. They're going to run this function. Then they're going to do this thing. And then they're going to report back to you what they've done. They're going to say, okay, on Monday, I, I got through these five things, or I'm going to connect to, I'm going to copy and paste this thing, and then I'm going to put it into Slack, or I'm going to copy and paste this thing, and I'm going to put it into Salesforce, or I'm going to copy and paste this thing, and whatever, right? Now, instead of the EA doing that and reporting back to you whether it succeeded or, or whether they succeeded or failed in achieving those goals at the end of the week, Task Magic is going to tell you which ones were successful, which ones failed, why they failed, and how you can fix them. Yes. And I'm just now thinking of, because one, two things, three things. First thing is yes to all that. The second thing is how you can automate updates on the end of day, start of day, update task managers and things like that. So I'm thinking about that flow, which is pretty amazing because I didn't think about it. Here's what I did all day. And you're like, cool, here's 382 steps of what I did. Here's what I did. Here's my work today. And you're thinking like, oh my, God, one, that's cool. And then three, the ability to maximize what like an EA or a VA or a virtual assistant does for you. So given that, like you can 10X their output by giving them a tool, either your executive assistant or your virtual assistant, you can give them this tool, which makes me think now, like a, it's something we've got to explore. Well, I mean, it's going to make them more efficient, like, even yeah. if you have a, a VA and you may want to keep them right. because they do certain things that, that even Task Magic might not be able to do. But what those executive assistants can do is automate all the things that, that they do that Task Magic can own. And you basically empower them to be more efficient on your behalf by giving them a login yeah. to Task Magic. They automate all the things that yeah. they can do that they can automate, which frees them up. Yeah to do the more human things that you really want them to do. For example, if you want them to be making phone calls on your behalf, now all of a sudden, yep. inst instead of having 25% you know, of their time be free to make phone calls on your behalf, right. now all of a sudden they can spend 100% of their time making phone calls. Basically, they can do the serious value add stuff that you can't automate. The, they can scale the unscalable stuff because you have scaled the scalable stuff. Right. Yeah. And I would like to know what like a, because it really does put it because there's no like standard operating procedures with this, right? It is you or them doing the thing that's either can, it's almost like it create, now that I'm thinking about this, it almost breaks down the language barriers of these things. You know how if you hire a VA in Thailand and you're in America or New Zealand or Australia and you're looking at the, and you're going, oh, cool, I got to spell everything out. We've all dealt with like, offshore, right? Yes. Like where there's, there's just a breakdown in translation, right? Yes. The language barrier is real and it's there and you have to spend more time doing it versus a lot of times people send them a loom or a video recording of something and it's cool. They'll send one back of here's what I did. And now you're able to take this thing that went back and forth. Oh, that's brilliant, Jason. So here you go. I actually think that this is almost like a, a white label type of a tool in a way. Almost, so yes, yeah. To, wow. to, where, to where these yeah. these EAVA agencies would be able to make their team members more efficient, and it right. would actually make it would make their job more fun too. So they would become almost like automation specialists instead of just yeah. doing repetitive tasks. They would become specialized in how to yeah. set up and configure and maintain and run task magic so yeah. that these guys don't even have to think about that to where, hey, we're going we're gonna to help you think of ways to automate your business that you haven't even ever thought of before. We're going we're yes. gonna to effectively virtually follow you around. You're going to share screens with me. I'm going to follow you around virtually throughout your day, and I'm going to think of all the ways that I can automate your life and make it better. For you. That is brilliant because the answer to that is absolutely. Like now I have this business, well, because I'm thinking 
we have had two like VA firms that were like that have maybe 20, 30 VAs that work on it, but I haven't pitched it in this manner. So I'm like, we're still finding that, per like I was telling you, that perfect product market fit where now we have, I'm trying to wonder about the limits of what our product market fit even is and not seeing them. If I can sit here uh, on the cold face podcast and figure out an, ex an, a, an exploratory path that actually works. Oh man. Jason. Yeah, that's adding, <laughs> well, look, that, that's adding six figures at ARR well, right there, baby. Look, man, I'll expect my check in the mail. That's all good. I'll give you oh, I'll dude, give you my address after the after the podcast. You tell me <laughs> well, we can mind. we can automate the commission payments. We can yes, automate. Dude. I'll tell you what, once yes. I'm in Mexico, I will send you what my local Done. cantina is, and you can automate oh. by a task rabbit the buying yeah. of a margarita for me every <laughs> Friday. <laughs> At at six p.m., you can order via Task Rabbit. You can order my uh, my margarita for me and have it that frosty cold margarita Done. waiting for me. How about that? Done. I will build <laughs> and this, then, and then we'll build content around. It. Love it, love it. And then when you're and then when you're down in Mexico, you can schedule the ordering of two margaritas, one for you, one for me, and we can sit down and we can share margaritas together. I am now. See what you're finding out is this. I'll actually do. So I love taking this seed or this kernel of of a happenstance joke and i will make it to the nth degree i'm following through on this Jason. so like this is we're good to go man i love it i love it now how do you so when someone comes to sign up because you, you've been doing this for nearly four years now so you've been at this for a while so i'm on the task magic website as i said taskmagic.com i don't see unless i'm just missing it here I don't see the pricing model. So how do you guys make your money? How do you charge? How is it based on a per automation? Is it based on a flat SaaS monthly fee based on tiers? How do you guys make your money? How do you charge? How do customers pay you? So it started off, we haven't been doing the, like the v, V1 Inc. is the corporate umbrella to this company. And it started off as like, like an app builder, not like a web app builder. And then we learned Earlier this year, it was it's just earlier this year that like we started adding automations and workflows to the things that people wanted. And then we started learning that a lot of people were more concentrated, wanted more work on the automations and workflows. They just had, didn't know what they wanted necessarily. So we started helping them and we started working around the pricing of what like Zapier was. And it's like, I don't think you could get, I think if you added conditional logic to a step, it was like 75 a month on Zapier, something like that, like paid monthly. So I was like, okay, how much would I pay for someone to monitor and manage it? It was like a hundred bucks. So it was like, cool. So how, like, what if it was also unlimited? So it started off where we were doing 200 bucks a month, where we would build it, take care of it for you, monitor and manage it. And so every time the alerts would like, you'd get an alert, but we would take care of it. And then we fix that thing, re-record it for you and keep going. So we were like, all right, so we'll do that. It's be $1.99 a month. And then, so I think we were thinking about some usage-based pricing where we were going to go, okay, cool. What about we just add four hours? So our thing isn't task-based, it's hours-based because we're like running this recording. How many times it's running? Did it take three minutes? That's three minutes you don't have to do. And then we started organizing pricing around, would a consumer use this? How serious are people signing up for 20 or 30 bucks versus two or 300 bucks and like trying it out? So why we don't have pricing on the website, it's because we're still in the cold outreach stage where I think you can go and sign up for the freemium account. I do, I think, I don't remember. I do believe so. But like right now, we've just been cold outreaching and referral based. So it's just been referrals right now. Paid customers are paying 200 bucks a month is our average plan. And that was unlimited. And I think we're still doing it unlimited. But in the next month or two, we will be, as you do, like the five, we're going up to 500 bucks for the unlimited plan. But you can also add teammates for 100 bucks a seat. But the 200 bucks a month plan will be 40 hours. So essentially, we're equating it to the hours you would save in a month. So it's like you're saving a week of your time or someone's time, your EA time, your VA time, like a week and a month. What is that worth to you? 
So if I could save you a week, which is 40 hours of work that you wouldn't normally have, that you wouldn't otherwise have to do if we run this. And then I thought, all right, so we, but we're not getting consumer facing people, right? So our entry level price right now at the moment is 200 bucks, 200 bucks a month. Yep. And you can run unlimited tap doing whatever. It will eventually be 40 hours. You can run it. So we'll limit it, but we will probably introduce a con- customer, like a, individual consumer facing price at about 20 or 30 bucks a month where we'll give you four hours of runtime and the reason why we did that time safe and the reason why we're doing that and i'm still in decision about it because the churn rate for something that low i've learned over the course of running SaaS company is you'll get people to just come in do it and not commit to anything and you're like, oh, and then the product has to be way more on point and you got to way more get because you got to convert them and you got to level them up by themselves. Um, where two, three, four, two to five hundred dollar price range a month is allows you to grow and maybe build a support person, hire a support person to staff that thing. Yeah, right now our growth has just been us cold outreaching to people and referral based at 200 bucks a month. Love it. Now, two things on my recommendation would be uh, live on here live on air here i'm going to give you two recommendations one is fix okay. the faq link in, in the footer of your site it's a dead link it doesn't go anywhere that's the first thing and the first place okay. that people usually go is faq i would be like if i wanted to learn more i'd go to the faq page hopefully jason i, I didn't even know we had an faq there you go you got an faq button live here your, on the podcast your, I have no footer. idea that even existed so go and fix that second thing Make a freemium model, a free forever tier of one hour of automation per month, free forever plan, free one hour of automation per month. And the reason I suggest that is because you want, sure, you, of course, you might have a free trial, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know if you do a free trial. I, I don't see that on the website, but first of all, I, I'd suggest a free trial anyway. But if you make a free forever plan, then you don't need to have a free trial because that is the permanent free trial. Yeah, and do one hour yeah. of automation month because I think yeah. that if people could taste this and they could taste it risk free and they could try it and they could set up some automations, they would think of new ways that they could automate other things, right? So it's sometimes, I agree with you. sometimes yeah. it's a lack of creativity that entrepreneurs have. And particularly yeah. if they're working with an EA or a VA and basically they just task them, they say, hey, for the next week, your sole job is to figure out how you can automate my life using task magic. And they're pretty mm-hmm. quickly they're, they're pretty quickly going to outstrip the free plan, and they're going to ask their boss, "Hey, could we jump up to the thirty dollars a month plan?" Oh, hey, we've outstripped that. Could we jump up to the two hundred dollars a month plan? So I feel like there's a pathway here to go from freemium to fully paid, and I feel like that's the journey that you need to take your customers on, or that you can take your customers on, and they're going to automate so many things that they're going to very rapidly escalate through their plans, particularly if they have a team that they need to automate for, and particularly let's say you're an agency. Yeah. So let's say you're a dev agency, right? Let's say you're an e-commerce agency and you got 40 developers and they do different tasks. They do different roles. They're front-end developers, back-end developers, et cetera, et cetera, uh, system integrators, et cetera. And they've got tasks they need to do. They've got things they need to do in Jira, et cetera. There's a lot of automation that's possible there that I think as part of a team plan, you're going to pretty quickly use up any starter plan, free plan, whatever. You're going to pretty quickly use that up and you're now all of a sudden going to be in a paid tier. So I think fix your FAQ and put a freemium model in place to where people can sign up. Because at the moment, as I see on your website, get access just for everybody listening. If you want to learn more, go to taskmagic.com and then you can click the sign up to get access. You can just fill out the form, first name, email, et cetera. Click access and then I'm guessing from there, you uh, does that is I'm guessing you're using Task Magic yourself to collect these signups to then have your team reach back out to them via phone or email to onboard them. Is that right? Is that how it works currently? That is correct. Yes. So we're onboarding them. Now. If you would, what's funny is if you would have caught me two months ago, I think we had pricing on there. Right? Like, Interesting. And it's just been growing what we're doing and we've been going cool. Then here's secrets, secrets on the coal face. And it's, yeah, dude, you, you put pricing on there and then you box outbound salespeople on a corner. Sure. So while you're figuring out pricing, because it's not right now, it's not necessarily a consumer pricing, th- like a consumer priced product. Like I want to yes. build up that, that, that momentum for it to be that, but what do we've all made something for the consumer, right? And 
the freemium model, while I do believe you are ultimately right, Jason, I really do. And I'm going to do it. But like right now, when you're like growing, you don't want to impede it. And most people that gravitate toward free are like the biggest complainers. Does that make sense? Sure. Like yeah, it, they it is what it time. is. Sure. Sure. Yeah. So we don't have the support staff for it. We don't have the frequently asked questions. We don't have the knowledge base article about it. We're just going, here's what works. Our, uh, we have a couple hun- hundreds of customers now, I think. Hundreds. Yeah, it's into the hundreds now. So like hundreds of customers with not a dollar on marketing. Free is marketing driven. So you're like, that's great. So now you got to put money toward marketing versus like sales outreach. But like, that's even fine. And that's still good. You are in your thesis, you are one, you are 1000% correct, which is if someone gets a taste for this for one hour a month, they w- 49%, 58% of them will go up to a $20, $30 plan. It just, they just will. They'll be like, holy crap. Yeah, I need to do that. I'm absolutely. Now, people on the free, if there's any friction in that process is has any question marks, it brings issues. Then those issues, if you don't get to them with proper support staff, escalate to Twitter. Yeah. And you're like, you can't control it. So there's a lot of benefit from working like white glove at the beginning while you're like really fermenting the process with like your product and making sure that like the onboarding is perfect. Everyone can self onboard. The second thing I'll give you a little behind the scenes, behind the scenes here is like, we don't have a dev ops person on staff. Like we have three engineers, but no dev ops personal person, like just yep. straight DevOps because we're resource constrained. And you're thinking, okay, so how do you make that freemium work? Because every time someone spins, we wanted like extra secure privacy. So we put like at 200 bucks, we put every, we can put everyone on the virtual private server. Like we can do that because there's money there. Sure. Now we'd have to change the sure. infrastructure no, that makes sense. for the freemium piece. Sure. So, but you are 1,001%. I know this goes up. You are 10,000% correct. And I'm going to change that for you. I'm going to add that for you in the next month love, or two. A couple months. Man, absolutely love it. Jeremy, this, is, uh, this has been very eye-opening. Task Magic sounds like an amazing platform. I think for any e-commerce merchant out there, any service provider, any agency, anybody who's employing EAs or VAs today, I feel like Task Magic will be a fantastic fit for them. It sounds like you're absolutely on the war path for growing this business again, your next business to seven, eight figures. So that's very exciting. You've clearly got a path. You've got a vision. You know what you want to do. You know how you want to do it. We're now at the stage of the podcast where I get to turn the tables. I get to hand the microphone over to you and I get to let you ask me one question, any question you like. It can be business, it can be personal, it can be anything you like. And so I would love to turn the microphone over to you. Jeremy Redmond, Task Magic. what is your question for me? This is going to sound very elementary, but I've been wondering is what is the background behind Coalface? So that's a very, very good question. And it's something I guess I haven't really talked about before. And I think the reason, and it's a confusing name, and I'm sure that I would probably from a marketing perspective be better if I called the podcast the e-commerce edge or something like that, which I may, who knows, I may change the branding of it in the future. But the reason that I came up with this name was there, there's a lot of theorists in our industry. And I see them every day and I see them spouting off and I see them talking on LinkedIn. I see them talking on Twitter, et cetera. And I see them talking about things that they clearly have had that they've never done before. And so I I saw so much content in our space of e-commerce coming out from people that were just purely theorists, not doists. And I definitely Mm. myself a doist more than a theorist. Now, sure, I occasionally navel gaze like anybody does. I occasionally pontificate like anybody does. And I occasionally have ideas that I like to throw out there for a bit of banter around like anybody does. But I consider myself much more of a doist than a theorist. And so when I think of people working at the coalface, that terminology, they're in the trenches. They're at the coalface. They're doing the doing. They're actually doing the work. And I wanted to call it at the coalface. And I consider almost everything I do working at the coalface doing the thing as opposed to talking about doing the thing. They say, uh-huh. that they, they say that those that do and they say that those that can't teach, you know what I mean? I always wanted, yeah. to, be one of the, I always wanted to be one of those people that actually does the thing 
especially does the thing before they talk about doing the thing. And so that I could speak from firsthand experience, that I could speak from firsthand knowledge, that I could speak from a place of understanding. And so that's really where the at the coalface terminology came from is thinking of myself through the lens of being a doist versus just a theorist and holding myself accountable to that mantra. I love that. I'm because I'm glad I asked that one. And I think I'm like very the, glad you did too. The, and because now I know now it because it fits so beautifully. Because I thought so what my interpretation of it was, just coming in completely blind, was for me it was like I think of the movie Zoolander where like they're working in the coal mine and they come out and their faces have coal dust all over. Yes. So I'm thinking like, okay, so yet yeah, the workers have coal dust on their face, coal on their face, coal face. And then you're saying like the actual coal face is a proper term. That yes. means where the work gets done, like at the front or at the place in the mine where it starts, like the actual chipping is from there. Right. Like that cool double meaning. Ah, thanks for sharing, Jason. I'm glad I got my question in there. My, my absolute pleasure. I'm thankful that you asked it because I'm sure that's a question that's been on many people's lips. So there we go. Now, if people want to get a hold of you or they want to learn more about Task Magic, are they best to say, for example, get a hold of you on LinkedIn, Jeremy Redman on LinkedIn, or are you are they best to go to taskmagic.com, fill out the get access form, have one of your people get back to them? How would you prefer that people find out more about Task Magic if they want to learn more? Yeah, so you can go to taskmagic.com, check it out, or my direct contact is jeremy at taskmagic.com. Feel free to email me, DM me on Twitter. I also I'm on YouTube. I make daily content. So youtube.com slash the Jeremy Redman. The new handles. Brilliant. Love it. Listen, Jeremy, it has been fabulous speaking to you. I appreciate you sharing your story. I appreciate you sharing what you're doing over at Task Magic. Very exciting. Haven't seen anything like this before. I don't even know if you've got any other competitors out there, but certainly this seems very new. It seems really innovative. And I love that you've taken these concepts of no code, low code development platforms, databases, like we said, it's almost like a bubble, air table, Zapier mix, but you've mixed it all together in a really unique, innovative way. Love what you're doing. Would love to get you back on in another 12, 18 months and see how far Task Magic has come. So thank you very much for sh sharing your story with us today, mate. Look forward to having you on soon. Thank you so much, Jason. This was a pleasure. Are you a B2B or D2C e-commerce merchant? Then head over to greenwoodconsulting.net to learn how we can help you scale your business.